going to be interesting, but it's also going to look at another angle of coding, another concept, which is data types, which is very important. And it comes in, goes, comes in like all coding languages all across the board. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually play this icebreaker game because we want you guys to get a look at what our activity is today. So to play this game, basically, we'll play like one round together and I'm going to select one of the articles, articles there and it's going to ask for nouns, person, place, things, adjectives, numbers, anything. And we're going to put that together um, and then create a really funny story at the end. And this is just to illustrate what we're going to create today. So let me share my screen of what that looks like. So this is the page where we're playing the game. And as you can tell, there's a bunch of Mad Lib stories. Uh, let's take a look at Paul Revere. I've never done this one, so. So it's going to ask us for an adjective. So I might say like, I don't know, squirmy. An adverb, so an adverb describes the verb. So high, like she jumped high. Male celebrity, let's go with Justin Bieber. Nationality, let's go with the Canadian. Let's go with American. Noun number one, so the noun is a person, place, or thing. So I'll go with Paris. Noun number two, I'll go with a fan. And a person, place, or thing, I'll go with marbles. And number four, let's go with umbrella. And number five, let's go with computer. And a place, we can do Bahamas. Plural numbers, I spelled that wrong. Uh, let's see. Okay, a plural noun, so a noun with an S at the end. Uh, we can do bats, like, and do birds. The same plural noun again, okay. And then a state, so you can do like, New Jersey, is that a state? <laughs> okay, and then a type of liquid, so water, wine, um, raspberry juice. Well, I've played this game with a bunch of other kids before and they're very creative and blood is one of those juicy words that everybody wants to upvote. So we'll go with blood. So let's see the result. Paul River. Paul River was born in Boston, New Jersey in 1735. So he's really old. His father taught him to work with metals and he soon became a squirmy Paris. Okay. He was a soldier in the French and American War and was and was at the famous Boston fan party when Americans dressed as Indians dumped tons of blood into the ocean. Oh, well, wow. On April 18th, 1775, Paul Rever waited in Bahamas for a signal light from a church tower. The signal was to be one if by marbles, two if by umbrella. What does that even mean? When he got the message, he mounted his faithful computer and rode off high. On the way, he kept yelling, the birds are coming, the birds are coming. This was the beginning of the American War for Independence from King Justin Bieber. Wow. Okay, so as you can tell, a little awkward, a little um, interesting. Sometimes these can actually make sense, and then sometimes they'll just be super funny. Let's see medical drama. Let's do like one or two so that we can... Gonna get the point. So what we're going to create today is basically the same thing. We're going to ask the user in our scratch game to give us an adjective, an adverb, and a noun, and a bunch of other things. And we also have to create a story at the back of our minds to fill in those things. So think of a story as we keep creating this. Adjective, watery, adverb, mm, such a good adverb. Clearly. Now, uh, uh,
UFO. Sound number four. Um, string. These are very random, as you can tell. Microphone. And person, place, or thing. Let's, let's do a person. Let's do Trump. Okay, let's do bugs. 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 And part of the body number one, because we're going to do an arm. Part of the body number two, we could do a neck. Part of the person's name number one. Person's name, what kind of person should we pick? I guess I'll pick somebody who's like, not a real person. Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, and Donald Duck. Verb ending in S, okay, hates. Here the results. Okay, medical drama. Starring or staring, Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, and Donald Duck. Nurse, thank goodness you're here, doctor. A patient was just brought in with a badly bruised arm and a ruptured laptop. Unfortunately, Dr. Smith plans to operate clearly. Oh, doctor, we can't let him in. Look at the way his neck is shaking. Nurse. Uh-oh, he's putting a mask over his dog. The doctor, stop him before he hates somebody. Doctor, Smith, you can't operate on this UFO. I forbid it. Smith, how dare you say that to me? I'm your mentor. You're like a string to me. <laughs> okay, doctor, and you're like a microphone to me, but I can't risk the wrath of a Bugs Bunny to satisfy your ego. Look in the mirror. Would you trust that Bugs Bunny to remove a watery nail? Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, so as you can tell, this one was different. It sort of made sense. I don't know. I feel like this part made sense. But yeah, the whole story can be up to you. You just have to make sure that the types of words that go in would make sense to go in there, right? Like a part of the body. Or I like how they put one part of the body here and then like a random noun and the other part of the body here. So that basically, ladies and gentlemen, is what we're creating today. Uh, what we're going to do is take a look at how we can code that together. So what today will look like, so we've already played the game, we're going to look at strings, lists, and broadcasting messages. I believe we've done broadcasting messages before, so this might be a quick review. Remember, broadcasting is when you kind of send a signal to the other sprites, to the game, <coughs> to the background, to do something. A variable is like a box and it holds your piece of information in it and then when you need it, you can open it up and change it again. And let's take a look at some when statements, which kind of are like broadcasts as well. When this brain is clicked, when green flag is clicked, when space key is pressed, and when the backdrop switches to backdrop one or two, those are all great when statements. I believe you can find them in the control section and scratch. All right, so. I don't tell the computer to do something without a when statement. So we want that when statement, but we want to do it without a when statement. Because maybe we're not waiting for like a specific thing to happen. We just kind of, there's no way to code that a specific when statement. We just want to single something out. Well, it's called a broadcast message. So basically in control, you're going to find a bunch of well, not a bunch, but these three blocks, the broadcast box, broadcast message block. So broadcast message one, it's just going to broadcast a message. It's like a, it's like a radio wave, right? When the signal is received, a new sequence of code can begin automatically. So basically, you have a radio that sends a signal, and the others, like the station sends a signal, and re your radio receives it, right? Like back in the day, people did that. So broadcast message, you're sending the wave, or you're waiting for something to happen as you send the wave. And then when that message is received, maybe like a different character receives that message, then a new sequence of code can start like do this, change the background, go jump five, change the variable by negative three. A bunch of different things can happen. You just have to broadcast the message and receive the message. Simple, simple. The next part we're looking at is data types. So we have 
what a data type is, is basically when you're storing information like in variables, those variables have data types because what a variable holds is data, it's information. How we hold that information depends on the type of information it is because different pieces of information take different amount of space in a computer. So you probably heard of the word, um, you know, bytes and kilobytes, and megabytes and all those bytes. Those are telling you how much data storage, data space is in your hard drive. So based on the number of things that it's stored and how big those things are that it stores, you're going to be, you know, using up your data. So same thing happens when you're coding. A string is a character, a number, a symbol. These things are in quotation marks. They're just a string of whatever they are. Integers, those are the numbers that you can actually manipulate and operate on. You can add or subtract them. You can multiply, divide them. You can exponentiate them. Is that a word? Or, okay. So there's two types for now. There's strings and there's integers. Strings are your characters, numbers, and symbols. Integers are the numbers you can actually change. So, for example, a string would be like, welcome to my game. An integer would be five. So if I was to store those things, I would store welcome to my game in a string, and I would store the number five, like a variable five, in an integer type of data. That's more in different kinds of programming. All you gotta know really is that there's strings and integers in Scratch. Now, the reason why it's important to know that strings are a thing in Scratch is because you want to combine strings together in Scratch. So for example, if I have apple and banana and i want to put them together the output will be apple banana without a space but how do i get that what is the command for that that is the join command in the operator section so i want to join the string the number the, the words the characters apple and banana and here it comes apple banana there's no space between because we've concatenated the strings together I take a look at something called lists. So we're going to use both that join command and the lists in our code today. So lists are also called arrays. Basically, when you're, let's say that, you know, I'm storing the information about a player uh, that's playing my game, and they're customizing the character. They're customizing Scratch the Cat. So I'm asking them, okay, what do you want to name the cat? What's the height? What's going to be the color of the cat? And they're telling me all these pieces of information, and I don't feel like storing it in separate variables. I don't want to store them in separate variables because, like, that's very tedious. I just want to see all the information about the cat that they want to create in one list. So that's why we create a list, right? So what is this going to do? We're going to store all that information in a list, which is basically this box. So I click make a list and I wanna know, okay, the name of the cat that they want, the color of the cat, the height of the cat, the breed of the cat, the uh, color of the eyes of the cat, you know, all these things. And I'm just going to add whatever they say to the list of words. So if you take a look at this code here, this block of code, add whatever that is that it's saying to the words, to, to word, which is like a list, right? So each data piece inside my list is called an item. So the, the hair color is an item, the name of the cat is an item, and so on and so forth. Every item is paired with a number. So I can actually like remember that, okay, if I put the name of the cat first, it's gonna have a one next to it. And I put the color of the cat next to it, then I'm underneath it, then I'm gonna have a two next to it. And the reason why there's a number is so that you can retrieve that data by calling that number. So when I added something to my list of words, I now want to like maybe get whatever that was. I want item one of words to come out of the screen and be like, put it inside my string. Maybe I want to join two strings together. I don't know. What I'm saying is that this is a very important piece of code that will help us retrieve what we're putting in here. 
So if I want the very first thing on my list, I'm going to say 1. But if I want the second thing, then I'm going to change this number to 2, so on and so forth. Let's break down what exactly we're making. We are making a game that is basically the same thing as the game we just played. It's a matlet. And what are the sprites that we're going to need? We're just going to need one main sprite, which is going to do all the talking. So there's a bunch of different ways you can set this up. Um, you can get rid of the sprite and just put it on the screen. I'm going to keep the sprite because it just makes it easier for me. But it's totally up to you once you get the code to change how the looks are. And what backdrops will we need? Well, we're going to need anything that you like. So if you don't want to change the backdrop, you can keep it white and blank. If you want to change it to jungle, change it to jungle. Change it to the pyramids, change it to whatever you please. So we have one main sprite. We have any backdrop you choose. And remember those other pieces of code that I mentioned, like the join block and the signals and the lists. Those are all important. So let's get started. Remember, this is what your Scratch setup looks like. So I'm going to join my Scratch page. And I hope you guys are logged in and ready for your Scratch page. Ready? So, let me share my screen. So of course, you should be logged into your Scratch account. I am not, so if you're not logged in, you can still create the game. I'm just going to get rid of this green box over here. Now, typically, you're going to be signed in with your profile name on it, a share button, but if you're not signed in, you can still create the game. You just won't be able to save it. Um, and I have a problem not saving it. I was just not able to log in today. That was not good. But it's okay. We can still create the game. So. In this game, I said you have to have one main sprite. So this could be our main sprite who does all the talking. But if we don't want it to do all the talking, then we can change it. We can grab something else to do all the talking. Like Devin here. Devin here looks like he's a pretty good talker, presenter. So I'm going to delete my cat and just have one sprite that I want to Actually, maybe Devin is a comedian. Maybe he's a stand-up comedian. So I'm going to click on stage and find a backdrop. You guys know how to get a backdrop at this point. I'm going to try to find a stage. So there's the theater. Oh, this is taking a little bit of time to load today. There we go, finally showed up. So I'm going to take Spotlight and I'm going to put my main character here. Maybe we're going to pretend like this is where he can sort of do a little bit of stand up comedy. Um, he looks a little bit too big for the stage, though, so I'm going to adjust him and make it a 60. Like that. Good. I like this size. So this is Devin. He's on stage. He's a stand-up comedian, and he's going to present our Mad Lip to the world. Now, the very first thing that we always, 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 always put in our code is, I bet you got it, when green flag clicked. So let's go and grab that. So we have events, when green flag clicked, and we're going to drag it to our processing area. Now, right off the bat, we don't really have to worry about the sprite in this code. What we need to worry about more is all our words that we want to store. So I hope you guys kind of in your head or on a piece of paper wrote down a story for yourself. You want to use a funny story. Um, because now we're going to start asking for words and storing those words. So let's get straight into it. Let's go over here into something called variables. So that's the second last one on the bottom. It's an orange variables button, and you're going to click that. 
it's going to say make a variable. We've already done this tons of times, but we want to actually make a list. So you're going to click on this bottom box that says make a list. And you're going to call your list whatever you want. So maybe you want it to call be called vocabulary. Maybe you want it to be called list of words. I'm just going to call mine words. You can call it words index, whatever you like. And this is for all sprites. sprites. And click OK. So it's going to show up here, actually. You can hide this later, but just to practice and kind of understand how a list works, we're going to keep it there. So now you have orange color blocks for make a variable and then a slightly more red colored blocks for the list. So we don't need the variables right now, so we're just going to scroll away from that and stick around in this section. Now, remember when I said we have to add blank to words? Well, let's see what happens if I add thing to words. If I click through this and then click the green flag, I have thing here. Interesting. But mm -hmm. is there a way I could just create a bunch of empty slots? Because I want to start off with empty slots. Well, yes, I can. I could just delete the thing things there, click on the green flag, and now I have an empty slot underneath thing. So you are going to find that it's a little bit annoying the way this works, all right? Bear with me. What we're going to do is we're going to click delete all of words. So that's the, that's the one, two, three. The third command here, delete all of words. It's pretty important, and it's going to help you so much. So just click that, and it'll delete any of the words that you had. Even if it's like sitting out here, the one that's not underneath your code, just click it, and it'll get rid of your words. So now I want three of those empty slots. So I'm going to type in three empty slots right under one green flag clicked. And I'm going to click on the green flag. And now I have three nice solid cells that are empty. Remember, we also call these items. So these items are empty in the list. The next thing we want to do is kind of introduce our character to our, our game player to the character and the character to the game player. So why don't we make sure that in motions, we are set at a specific X, Y coordinate. So I like the place where Devin is standing right now, so I'm going to keep him there. We're going to now proceed to the looks circle. And there's like a say hello, think situation. So let's say hello for two seconds, but let's change the message a little bit to suit our mad link. So we can say, Hi, welcome to Mad Lib Comedy. Now, Mad Lib, the type of thing that Mad Lib is, is super duper popular everywhere, like the, the word Mad Lib, right? So we're just going to try to make sure that we explain the game, the rules of the game. All right, so welcome to Mad Lib Comedy. And then it's going to say that for two seconds. And then I'm going to say the next part. I'm going to ask the audience for specific types of words. That's a very long sentence. So we'll get another stay statement. Then I'll put them together in a funny story. Right? So we've explained the instructions and now we're going to do them. We're going to ask the audience. We're going to ask the user. You guys remember how we actually do that? How do we ask and get input from the user? So you recall in the sensing section, which is a nice light blue color, fourth last from the bottom, we have touch and mouse pointer and touch and colors, which we've already explored. And I mentioned the ask command. And it's finally coming to use today. So we're going to ask the things we need in our funny story. So I don't know if you guys have prepared a funny story in the back of your head, or you just want to follow my funny story. My funny story is not even that funny, to be honest, because it's a put together of something really quick. So let's try and see if we want to get inspiration from what we've read. When we read the medical drama, it was like a nurse and a doctor talking. 
So why don't we try to kind of rethink a story like that of a nurse and a doctor in our heads? And what are the kinds of words that a nurse and a doctor would use? So we talked about part of a body, names, nouns, places, um, adverbs, and adjectives. So I'm going to ask first things first. Type a name. You can specify if you want a male name, a female name, a fake name, a nickname, whatever you want. So type a name. And this is where it's going to get interesting because what we're going to do is we're going to take that answer that they give and we're also going to replace or place it into our list of words. So let's go to, let's grab this answer button right underneath and scroll it out here. And then let's grab in variables, scroll down to our list. And let's try to see if there's a way we can change what we have already and make it filled with whatever the person's answer is. So I don't want to delete, I don't want to insert. Well, hmm. let's try replace. Replace the first item of words with thing. What is thing? Nope, it's the answer. So let's see what happens if we click this. Well, first of all, I got three more. And I have Devin talking to me. Type a name. So maybe I type Bob. And it stores Bob. It replaced the first item with Bob. But I also got six cells. That's not what I wanted. Six items. I did not want six items. So let's delete all of them. And then let's play the game. And it says, gives me three. And he's explaining the rules. Type a name. Cheryl. I got Cheryl up here. So you're probably noticing at this point that that delete all of words command is pretty important. Um, and we seem to be clicking it a lot, but it's not part of the code. So I don't want to manually do that every single time. So keep that in your mind because we're going to use it later on. Okay. So let's take a look. So we also want to talk and continue with our story. So I don't know what your guys' story is again, but let's do a spin-off of the nurse and the doctor situation. So how about type uh, mm, color? And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go to variables, scroll down, and we're going to grab the replace button. And we're going to grab that answer button again. So now make sure that you have replace item two of words. Okay, that's pretty important because we don't want to replace the first one again, the default one. Otherwise, we won't be able to continue. Otherwise, it's not going to store. <clears throat> it's not going to store the first one. Um, it's going to just store whatever the new information we put in. The one is item one. Okay, so let's keep going. Uh, so I got a name. I got a color. How about? Mm, what should we do? We could just do a random noun. So let's say type a noun. And let's go to variables and let's grab replace item. Oh, voice crack. Give me one second, guys. <laughs> Sorry. Replace item three of words with. We'll go to sensing and grab our answer. And put that in. So it's storing Cheryl still, which is kind of fun. So we put that in. So I have three things that I've asked, three items created from the start. Remember, if you want to make your story longer and more interesting, you can add more. And if you want to keep it concise, simple, then we can uh, stop here. So it's totally up to you how you want to do. Let's try doing a few more because we can make it more interesting that way. 
So to make it longer, later on you realize, hey, I really enjoy this. I want to make my story longer. Then all you have to do is add those same number of cells. And we can make this blank and put it here. <coughs> Sorry. So I add another cell. So now I should be able to uh, ask for another cell item, right? Now here's the thing. Remember your number of cells and the number of things you ask have to match. If you have more cells than you are asking information of, or you're asking more and you don't have enough cells to store them, then your story's not going to work. So let's go into sensing and grab another one. That name, color, noun. Let's got. Let's get um, type uh, food. And let's go down and let's grab replace item four of words. If go back to sensing and grab that answer button. I click on answer, it's going to show me answer the whole time. So I don't want to do that. So if I click on the green flag, I got a bunch of more cells. And Cheryl's still there for some reason. Let's type a name. Let's change the name to like Go Go. And I got Go Go. Type a color, green. Type a noun. I I'm gonna put that in for food. Uh, Ferris wheel. Type a food. And it stored every single one into the list. And again, we got to delete. Perfect. So at this point, our store, like we've got all the words that we needed. Instead of continuing on in this super long sequence of code, the next part of the code, what I'm going to do is separate it because then I'll be able to see different chunks of my code better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to broadcast a message. We're going to grab broadcast message one and place it here. But there's a little arrow. And when you see it, it says new message, message one. So I'm going to click on new message so that I can uh, like remember what my broadcast message was. So I'm going to call it story. And I want to broadcast story. And remember, radio wave needs to be received. So when I receive story is now saved here. Isn't that great? I want to start putting that story together. And remember that super important piece of code that we had, which was join in operators? We are now going to use that. So the way that Devin is going to present his comedy, obviously he's going to say it. So we're going to go to looks and we're going to grab say. Say hello for two seconds. But obviously we don't want him to say hello in the middle after he's already introduced himself. We actually want him to say the story out loud. What we're going to do is we're going to go into operators. And you know how there's a plus and minus multiply divide sign? You go a little bit down. We have join apple banana down here. So let me bring that up. It's right under these hexagon empty shapes. There's join apple banana. And if I grab that, I can put it in my hello statement. But what I want to do, I don't want to put apple banana in my story, obviously, so I'm going to get rid of apple banana and both. In the first part of the join cell, I'm going to put a little circle here, my story part, and then the second part, we're going to join whatever that name was given. So maybe I'm the nurse and the doctor situation. Let's see. Doctor. Hurry. We have hmm, we should named blank. So what that name of the person is has to be whatever I stored in myself. So let's, let's play it for a second. I type the name Bob. Apple color blue. 
at the noun bag at the food. Dr. Hurry, we have a patient named. I think it's like a little colon there, right? Maybe we should make our story sentences a little bit longer. So we have a patient named blank. Oh, what I have stored for my name here, remember, is Bob. And Bob is item one of words. He is this first item. But all these items, how do I recall them? How do I say them? Remember, we talked about how they have numbers next to them. So if we go back to variables here and scroll down, we have remember that very special item one of words. So this keeps track of the words that we're going to use. So Dr. Hurry, we have a patient named, and then what's item one? The words Bob. And it's going to make a complete sentence. So let's delete the cells and try this code one more time. Name Haley, a color, Nusha, have a noun, uh, all, have a food, hurry, doctor, hurry, we have a patient named Haley. Now we can get rid of the colon here because that's a little bit unnatural for our nurse to talk in. And we're just basically going to continue our story like that. So we're going to go to looks. We're going to grab a say command. We're going to go to operators. We're going to grab the join command. And we're going to go to variables. And we're going to grab item blank of words. Not one, but two. We're going to put our story together. So we want to join. Let's think of a story. So the nurse says, Dr. Hurry with a patient named whatever the name is. Um, and then the next thing we asked for was a noun. Oh, no, it was a color. Um, she's a mess. She's, um, oh, not she, because we don't know what the name is. But we could put um, the patient is a mess. Because their blood is, and then whatever the color is, type of color, and we'll put that in block two. Remember fuchsia? So we could actually put that right where banana is. And put that for three seconds. Let's see if there's a way to make this part small. Mm, I can't adjust, but I can zoom out. There we go. You guys can see that. So the first part says, Nurse, so the first one, the nurse says, Doctor, hurry, we have a patient named, put the name there, and we have the patient is a mess because their blood is whatever that color is. And let's see, we're gonna do this again. So we're gonna go to looks, we're gonna grab say, we're gonna go to operators, we're gonna grab join. And we're gonna go to variables, and we're gonna go down to make a list into item number of words. And remember, we're at three, and the three that was just a noun, so it could be anything really. So we're gonna join put this statement in here, and we're gonna get rid of apple and banana. So remember, when you're like covering something with this thing, you can delete it or you can keep it. It really will not make a difference. So the patient is a mess because their blood is blank. Um, They've got a case of, I think whatever that noun was. Uh, so they've got a case of ball, they've got a case of umbrella. So we can put some funny put together of words there, right? I think I'll put a colon there. They've got a case of Ratchet, whatever that noun is, and then I want to put itis at the end. How do I put another thing at the end of the word that I've already added? So you're noticing that a lot of the words that we're adding you just come at the end of the sentence. How do I make that come before the end? How do I make it come a little bit in the middle? 
Well, just go to operators and grab another join statement. But this is going to get complicated, okay, guys? Instead of Apple, I'm going to put one join statement inside that join statement and, and banana and whatever that other join join thing is. I'm going to put the other rest of my sentence. So I'm going to put itis because itis means inflammation. But it sounds like a disease. So join the join statement. They've got a ratchet case of item three with itis. So it's going to be really complicated. So now, well, not that complicated, but it's fun. I'm going to grab that whole thing and put it in hello. Okay. I'm really excited to try it, so let's try it. Delete all the words. We click on the green flag. I have four cells. I'm going to ask the audience for specific types of questions, then I'll put them together in a funny story. Type a name. My name is red. I have a color. Uh, let's go with any color. Let's go with yellow. Type a noun. Let's go. Type of food, a curry. There's Dr. Hurry with a patient named Fred. The patient is a mess because their blood is yellow. They've got a case of ratchet discobolitis. Did you guys see that? That was really funny and weird. Discobolitis, you just put together a random word. Now what I want you guys to do is make sure at the end of your first join statement that you have a space, like you just click the space bar, right? There's a little space after. It's going to make your words have spaces between them. And in Python, it kind of works the same way. You kind of have to put your own spaces there uh, in order to make the, the words be separate, like an actual sentence. All right, folks, we're almost done. So we're going to grab our say again and complete our story because we have type of food. And we're going to go to operators and we're going to grab join apple banana. And we're going to go to variables, and we're going to grab item one of words. But we're not going to put it in one, we're going to put four. So remember, you have to make sure that you're changing your item number every single time. So now let's join the next part of our sentence. Doctor says, no worries, nurse. Mm -hmm. We can band-aid or bandage them with, and then click the space bar, and then whatever item four is. So if item four is curry, we can bandage them with curry. What does that even mean? I notice that our sentences, I don't know, I don't like how they are going by really fast. I'm a slow reader. I'm going to make these five seconds long. And let's delete ourselves, replay the game. The name. name is uh, Justin. I have a color. Uh, turquoise. I have a noun. Um, Crystal for food. Um, spicy hot chicken. Right, so Dr. Hurry, we have a patient named Justin. The patient is a mess because their blood is turquoise. They've got a case of ratchet bristolitis. Doctor, no worries, nurse. We can bandage them with spicy hot chicken. And what does that even mean? Super funny, a random story that you put together there. So that is, you're probably thinking, the end of the story. We've created a story. Um, it's kind of the end of the story, but we haven't really finished the code yet. So what are we going to do? We actually need to realize that whenever we play the game, every time we restart the game, we have to delete our words manually. That's what we've been doing. But now that we've reached the end of the game, uh, we put together a whole code, we can actually bring this delete all of words to the very, very bottom and put it at the very bottom of our game. 
If you hadn't grabbed all the words beforehand, no worries. You go to variables, scroll down, and you just go to the third block, delete all of words. Bring it here. So one final time, let's play this game to make sure it works. Oh, it didn't delete all of words. Hold on. Stop the game. If I click it again. I think the best way to stop this is probably to delete all of words from the start and then from the bottom as well. So when we start the game, delete them all, then create them all. Then we're going to fill them ourselves, and then here it's going to display them and then delete them all again. Type a name, Fred, type a color, green, type a noun, uh, like it, type food. Donald's burger. Curry, we have patient named Fred. Patient is a mess because her blood is green. We've got a case of ratchet blanket itis. No worries, nurse. We can banish them with McDonald burgers. What does that even mean? Uh and you'll notice that our cell deletes over here because we deleted it. So it deletes it at the start, deletes it at the end. Um, technically, you wouldn't need the first one anymore. But to stay on the safe side, we're going to keep them both. And maybe you don't want the person to see all the words here. So you can get rid of this. You just go to variables, scroll down to the list, and you can actually remove words. So you click on this check mark and it's going to get rid of or put on uh, the thing. But if you do want them to be able to see it, then you can keep it. And you can obviously, well, usually you can make this smaller. So it just fits perfectly for. All right, folks, so that looks like our whole game is complete. We've created a Mad Lib based off of the game that we just played earlier today. If you missed out on any part, feel free to rewind, go back, slow down, um, and watch the video again to make sure you are keeping up with everything. But this is our final code right here. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed the game. So we'll see you guys next time.